I'm so glad that my mother prayed for me. said man I'll always pray Paul said to pray without ceasing Jesus said ask for what you will in my name this shall be given unto you you say to the mountain be moved the mountain will go away into the sea but today we're telling God answer the prayer I'll share with you personally when I'm troubled by something I've learned to lean on Jesus but we are troubled on every side but not distressed persecuted but not forsaken cast down but not destroyed if you would just learn to pray about it and really give it to Jesus I would live a witness that your life will be better so often we go into things and the situations on our own accord our own will but Jesus really taught us how to pray when he was in Gethsemane he said father if it be thy will let this cup pass from me he said nevertheless not my will but thine will be done so that lets us know that there were even some things that Jesus didn't want to do but prayer taught him how to be obedient to God and that's what prayer is really all about Taking your will, putting it aside, and the will of God being done in your life. This is the time we receive prayer requests. If you know anyone that needs our prayers, will you share that with us this morning? Have the sacrifices for the love of their children. And though our mothers are not perfect, they brought us into this world. We should express gratitude for them because they have been a blessing unto us. Not only thanking our mothers, thanking all the women who have served as mothers to us and given us wisdom, watched over us and cared for us when we could not care for ourselves. Thank you this day, God, for your mercy, your loving kindness shown unto us. It had not been for you who was on our side, tell us where would we be. If it had not been for the Lord who was on our side, Tell us where will we go. Down through the years you have been good to us. And we need you to move on our behalf on this day. But there's sickness in our families. Perhaps there's sickness in our own bodies. Something in our hearts that has been troubling us. Worrying us. Keeping us up late at night. But speak to us now, God. And let us know that everything will be alright. That you are... A God who sends the comforter, comforter in your name, that we may receive healing, that we may receive deliverance, that we may receive peace, that you will keep us in perfect peace if we keep our minds stayed on you. For it's not what we want today, God, it's what you want. So if you want that cancer to move, it will move. If you want that diabetes to move, it will move. If you want that heartache to move, it will move. If you want your spirit to be within us, it will be within us. But not by power, nor by might, but by your spirit, says the Lord. Send your Holy Ghost power here today, God, that we will worship you in spirit and in truth. That we will stand here today and say, you are the true and living God. We're not ashamed to tell others about you. Give us that fire like Jeremiah, shut up in our bones. And we will see today that you are the true and living God. In Jesus' name we pray, let us say together, amen. amen. Come to my next and tell me things will be all right.
blessing us today. The Lord will make a way somehow. And every round goes a little higher. Amen. Psalm 97 verses 8 through 12. Our scripture lesson for today. Have your Bibles with you. Will you stand and open them with us? This is God's word for God's people. People stand for the President of the United States. People stand for the Queen of England. We should stand also as believers to reverence the reading of the Word of God. Verse number 8, the New Revised Standard Version reads, Zion hears and is glad. The towns of Judah rejoice because of your judgments, O God. For you, O Lord, and the Most High all over the earth, you are exalted far above all gods. The Lord loves all of those who hate evil, and he guards the lives of his faithful. He rescues them from the hand of the wicked. Light dawns for the righteous and joy for the upright in heart. Rejoice in the Lord, O you righteous, and give thanks to his holy name. Look to neighbor and say, Rejoice in the Lord. Rejoice in the Lord. I need a little encouragement this morning. Shake their hands. Put your arm around and say, Rejoice in the Lord. Lord, Lord Amen. Lord, Lord, Lord. Rejoice in the Lord. You may be seated. On this Mother's Day, we want you to think about the goodness of Jesus. Amen. Amen. For Amen. God has been good to us. The old songwriter said, when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all he has done for me, my soul cries hallelujah. Thank God for saving me. How many of you thank God for mama today? Amen. My mother used to scold us when we were growing up that we couldn't sing that Church of Caesar song. because She said that she never packed our lunch in an old greasy bag. And we never went to school with holes in our shoes. That's right. <laughs> but amen. It sure felt like it sometimes. All right now. But it was the mother's love yes, sir. that kept many of us of where we are today. Oh, yeah. If it had not been for God blessing mama, Thank you, Thank mama you. blessing us, yes, tell us where will we be. All right, now. The church must be excited about the reign of God. God's people must continuously rejoice. Rejoice is defined as joyful, to make glad, to be merry. And we often limit our blessings because of a negative attitude about the life and about the church. For everybody, Mother's Day is not a happy day because many people may have not have even had a mother or maybe many people may have had a negative experience with their mother to the extent that they are often sorrowful on Mother's Day instead of having an excited heart filled with gladness and filled with joy. But I want to say to us is, is that if we are believers in Christ Jesus, and if God has blessed us with the gift of salvation, uh, that our hearts should be glad today because God has been good to us. So, even if your relationship with your mother was not always positive, uh, there's some lessons that you have learned that can help you understand, uh, even in bad times, how to rejoice. And I'm concerned today, church, because uh, there's an idea out there that it always should take another person uh, to make somebody happy. That, that the happiness is not based on uh, an elated state of joy, but happiness is based on what happens to you. And so, uh, if you are a mother today that did not receive a call from your children, uh, if you are a mother today that did not receive a Mother's Day gift, amen, uh, if you are a mother or you acted on behalf of a mother today and cared for the upbringing of many children uh, by encouragement 
coming to you today, if you are that child, is to reach up to heaven to God and say that you rejoice. And if you are a mother, you need to thank God for the opportunity to raise up a child in the way that they should go. Amen. Because God has been good to us. The songwriter said he looked beyond our faults and he saw every one of our needs. And your happiness today should not be based on the idea that it's going to take somebody giving you a gift or somebody saying something or doing something to you in order for you to have some joy. How many of you know today that you can still have joy with no money in your pocket? You can still have joy when there's pain in your body. You can still have joy even when your children disappoint you. Because if it, honestly, today, all of us were not good children. Many of us gave mama a whole lot of great hands. Many of us kept mama laying up, late, laying up late at night, worried about if we were going to make it home safely. And so if we are those children today, they can say and look back that I wasn't always good to mama but thank God for grace that gives me another chance to say Lord I thank you for my mother we cannot always wait until someone gives us something in order to be happy God has already given us the greatest gift which is Jesus and the Bible says the joy of the Lord is our strength and so you can't be a mother or a parent in this day and be weak when you have children amen parents you have to be firm you have to be strong and you have to stand your ground because if you watch our children closely sometimes they'll try to push us from one way to the next. Well, I thank God for the firm mothers. The mothers who just had to give you that look every now and again. And that look spoke a thousand words. It lets you know that if you are out of line, you better get back in line. Isn't it funny today when we go to Publix or the Bilo and we see those mothers who have to point their finger at their children and beg and plead them while they're in the grocery store? I shake my head when I look at those children because that wasn't me and my sister. My mother used to take off her shoe and pop us right there when we were in the aisle. And then we'd get another whooping when we get home. And I can stand here today and still say that the joy of the Lord is my strength. God wants us as a church to have a joyful attitude about life and about ministry. You're not going to have sunshine every day in life. For Jesus said, in this life you will have tribulations. Tribulations are common to the human experience, but they're also common to the life of the believer. We do not want to come to church to be served. The mentality of the church has to change from one that we we are looking to be served and to ship to the one where we are looking to serve. If you're always going out of your door with your hands out and if you don't receive with your human expectations, you will never be able to find joy because there are many times when you have your hands out that your heart will be grieved and instead you should have your hands up. I heard the songwriter said, all oh, to Jesus, I surrender. All to him, I freely give. In other words, instead of coming out expecting to receive, I'm coming out with my hands up expecting to give God a praise, give God a worship as I look back over my life and realize how good he has been. We do not come to church to be served, but we must come with an attitude of servanthood and humility. God loves a cheerful giver. And therefore, we must participate in ministry with hearts that are prepared to serve God through giving. And we're not just talking about financial giving. We're talking about giving with an attitude of service, with an attitude of gratitude. Could you imagine what it would be like for an unbeliever to experience the church while we are in the grocery store or perhaps at the doctor's office and you're talking about your problems with a sense of pain and disdain and frustration and frowning. That adds no incentive for them to want to come and know the God you serve. 
<laughs> you can be human and say, I acknowledge that there's pain in my body, but there's a God I serve who can take the pain away. I can acknowledge that my heart might be broken, but I serve a God that puts joy on the inside and it works on the outside. I serve a God that even in the midst of a family fight or a family struggle, that he'll walk with you and talk with you and tell you that he is your own. Psalm 97 is a royal song and acknowledges the reign of God. It describes his final judgment before he establishes his great kingdom. Even though the psalmist is not known, the attitude of the psalmist is very clear. As it opens up, it says that our God reigns. The Lord is king, let the earth rejoice, let the many coastlands be glad. The power of the Lord is awesome enough to melt even the mountains. Amen, somebody. Israel can rejoice that its God is greater than all the idols and so-called gods. For his people, God's spirit promotes not terror, but joy. And that's a celebration point right there for somebody here. You may not always have faith in other people because people can often disappoint you. You may not even have faith always in your family because even thus many of us know your family can let you down. But if you got faith in God, you can be sure that he is going to reign over the unjust and the just. So that when you as a believer experience a problem, that problem is not brought to bring you down. That problem is brought so that you can reach a level of discovery uh, about how good God is uh, even in the midst of trials and tribulations. Uh, while others have left us, uh, well, God is still blessing us. Uh, while others have turned their back on us, uh, God is still in the midst of looking over us uh, and watching over us. Uh, while others have disappointed us, uh, He still is searching our hearts uh, to find out if there's any joy. Uh, and I just want to know if I got a few people today uh, in they know what the meaning of rejoice is because in order to rejoice the word re means to do again and the word joy means to be glad so if you got to rejoice there already got to be some joy there so I ain't got to crank up nothing in you I ain't got to prime nothing in you because what I'm asking you to do is already there look at your neighbor say it's already there I can rejoice because joy is already in me and the preacher is just asking me to go back again and find the joy that's already there. In order to have joy one must have a personal relationship with God. In order to have joy Jesus must be special in your heart. Many of our mothers have demonstrated devout faith through giving of their time and their wisdom and their resources to their children. Mothers know that you don't have to always have a child that obeys in order to still love your child. Because even before that child could speak to you, even before that child could obey you, just like Mary and just like Elizabeth, you felt that child leap in your womb. You felt the birth pains moving, which was a reminder that God had given someone to you for you to give back to God. I'm going somewhere with this. Stay with me. But faith in God requires a trust that is deeper than the pains and suffering of life. Mothers know that when you have had contractions and even though you have had a little kicking and a little pushing, that even though it felt mighty bad, that that contraction and that pushing only lasted for a little while. And I got a few people today that maybe be struggling with the attitude of joy because you're feeling some contractions. You're feeling some pushing and some pain. But God is letting you know just like mothers carry a baby, birth pains are just a sign that deliverance is about to take place. So I get excited about my birth pains. I get excited every time I feel the contraction. Because I know that joy is on the inside. And what it's trying to do is get on the outside. So God can say to me, Happy Mother's Day. I'm giving birth to something. 
And in order for me to give birth to something, God wants me to feel a little pain every now and then. He wants me to feel a little contraction, a little pushing and pulling so that I can understand the real meaning of joy. Our joy is not based on the size of our circumstance. For many mothers have carried a five, a six, a seven, a eight, a nine, or maybe a ten pound baby. But after you deliver that baby and you look at that baby, you you know that it was only God that could bring that blessing out of you because you know yourself very well but God knows you even better and he would not put something in you that he would not know that he could get it out of you and I'm so glad today that he put some joy in me and I don't mind saying thank you Jesus I don't mind saying hallelujah I don't mind saying praise the Lord. Yes, Lord. God knows that our ending is going to be better than our beginning. Hallelujah. We have been learned as believers that trouble don't last always. And because trouble doesn't last always, we can rejoice in the Lord. Yeah. The text raises a question for us today. How do we rejoice in the Lord? People are bombing cities like Boston, Massachusetts. Men are kidnapping little girls in Cleveland, Ohio. Women are killing their husbands in sunny California. How do we rejoice in the midst of difficult times? Even here in our beloved city of Greenville, people who are a part of our faith are suffering at the hand of gun violence. Whether they be shooting us or stabbings, pain is being felt even within the body of Christ. So how do we rejoice in the midst of suffering? How do we rejoice in the Lord? I got three things to tell you and then I promise I'll be out of your way. The first thing that we do is, is that we follow the King. Look at your neighbor and say, follow the king. Verse number one says, the Lord is king. Let the earth rejoice. Let the many coastlands be glad. Another translation church says, the Lord reigns. The word reign comes from the Hebrew word melech, which means to become king, to make king, or to put on the throne. Tamla man said, take me to the king. I don't have much to bring. My heart is torn in pieces. It's my offering. It's one thing to know Jesus as Savior in your life, but it's another thing to know him as Lord. And this psalm is one of known as the enthronement psalm. And this was sang by the choirs as they ascended into the sanctuary for worship. They were not saying that through their singing that they were making God king, that he was becoming king, or that they were putting him on the throne. It was an act of reverence. It was saying that, God, we know that you delivered us out of captivity. We know that you saved us from sin and degradation. We know that you brought us out of our pain. But they are acknowledging him, not only as Savior, but also that God that reigns in sovereignty over their life. And I wish I could preach this like I feel it, but I got to the point in life where I really began to understand what it really means to trust in Jesus. The hymn writer said it this way, "'Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus, just to take him at his word, just to rest upon his promise, just to know what thus saith the Lord." And when you are in a kingdom, you know that if there's anything that you need, you truly know there ain't but one person that can give it to you. And you know that that person is the king. That's the person that's sitting on the throne. And in Bible days, before you came before the king, you had to have an attitude of reverence. You had to have an attitude of unworthiness. And you had to have an attitude to know that the king was greater than any man or any woman that was in the land. And the hymn writer psalmist is saying is that God is reigning and if he's on the throne I'm 
have been blessed by God. And if God has been good to me, it's already on my mind. I'm looking forward to the opportunity to pray. I'm looking to follow God because I know wherever he leads, I'm going to follow. Secondly, after we follow the king, we have to focus on the king. Look at verse 8 as it says, Zion hears and is not intentionally paying aggressive attention to the meaning of discipleship in such a way that the opinions of others are not guiding our consciousness. The thoughts and beliefs of our inner circle of friends and family are not dictating our commitment to God. Our focus on God is so strong that in spite of adversity, troubles, trials, tribulations, that we're going to listen to him. You know how some folks the church get uh, where you heard what pastor said. And then you start valuing your opinions uh, about what pastor said uh, and what God has said through the pastor uh, when you go out and check out with your other folk. Problem is we can't focus on rejoicing. We can't focus on discipleship. We can't focus on worship because we're listening to the wrong people. Anybody ever got some bad information from church folk? Anybody ever heard something that they believed when they first heard it, but later found out what they heard wasn't true? I got good news for you today that God won't tell you nothing wrong. The king is giving you divine instructions to help you keep your focus on following him no matter what the world may do. Follow the king. Focus on the king. Thirdly and lastly, you got to find joy in the king. Because discipleship is really about relationship. Look at the psalm as it closes. It says, for you, O Lord, are most high over the earth. You are exalted far above all gods. I get excited every time I read this. You got to excuse me. As it says, the Lord loves those who hate evil. He guards the lives of his faithful. He rescues them from the hand of the wicked. Light dawns for the righteous and the joy for the upright in heart closes out and says rejoice in the Lord O you righteous give thanks to him his holy name in order to find joy in the king today church we got to learn how to rejoice Rejoice comes from the Hebrew word samak, which means to give happiness. It means to make glad. It means to be merry. And I'm glad that I can take my time a little bit right here to help you understand why that those of you who have had the privilege to have a few birthday parties. And there are even others of you who have had the privilege to have a few surprise parties. And there are a few of you who have had some friends that saw you in your situation and decided to, to take you out to dinner or take you out for a night on the town. Then those surprise parties, birthday parties, or evenings on the towns, those actions of others tended to make you happy. They cheered you up a little bit. They gave you some pep in your step. They spruced you up uh, on the inside. They made you smile uh, because you felt uh, that the actions of others were sincere uh, and genuinely in trying to inspire happiness in you. Uh, and I'm glad that those things have happened in your life. I really am. I'm glad uh, that you've had a few surprise uh, birthday parties. I really am. I'm glad uh, that you've had uh, a few friends uh, to take you out of the town. I'm glad uh, that you've had a few birthday parties. Uh, Every now and then, I'm glad that these folk were able to cheer you up. But that's not what the text is meaning today. What the text says to rejoice is inviting the believer to do something on the inside. Uh, igniting something that's already there. And so what this means is, is that you can't celebrate God if you don't know God. You can't find joy in the King if you don't know the King. You can't have to depend on others to make you happy. Only God can make you happy. And if you got God, you can rejoice. I got 
trying to get out of here. But I just want to tell somebody, as I can't wait for my neighbor to shout, in order for me to have a shout. I can't wait for my neighbor's compliments, for me to know who I am in God. My identity doesn't come from my neighbor. My identity doesn't even come from my mother. My real identity comes from the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Can I get a songwriter by the name of Jonathan Nelson to help me? He says, I got evidence. I got confidence. I'm a conqueror. I know that I win. I know who I am. My name is Victory. Every now and then, when life gets you down, you can look back over your life and say, Mama has been good to me. You can say, Daddy has been good to me. You can say, My friends have been good to me. You can say, My neighbors have been good to me. But when I really think about it, I say it was nobody but Jesus that can bless me and give me the joy that I have. Because a birthday party might be good, but it only lasts for a little while. A trip to Ruby Tuesdays might be good, but it only lasts a little while. I want you to be somebody that can get to the place where you know you know that you know that you know that you know that you sure enough got Jesus living on the inside. And you say, this joy that I have, the world didn't give it. The world didn't give it, and the world can't take it away. Mama, you know the power of faith. Mama, you know the power of giving. Mama, you know that you got to be a cheerful giver, even when your children don't sometimes listen. I'm going somewhere. In order to learn the gift of rejoicing, you got to learn how to be a cheerful giver. And all I'm trying to tell you is, even though you might have some pain, even though you might feel some pushing, even though you might have trouble, the pain and the pushing and the trouble is, it's there to help you find your joy. You got to have the power to give. You got to have the purpose to give. You got to have the passion to give in order to rejoice. I'm closing here, I promise you, and I'll be out of your way. There was a mother who wanted to teach her daughter a lesson. She gave a little girl a quarter and a dollar for church. She said to her little girl, with whichever one you want in the collection plate, amen, she gave her a quarter and she gave her a dollar. And she said, put whatever one you want uh, in the collection plate, uh, and you can keep the other for yourself. Uh, when they got to church, uh, her mother asked her daughter, uh, which amount has she given? Uh, the little girl said, well, uh, I was going to give the dollar, uh, but just before the collection, uh, the man said that we should be cheerful givers. Uh, and she said, I knew I would be a lot more cheerful uh, if I gave the quarter. Uh, and all I'm trying to tell you is, you can't be God's given, no matter how you try, the more you give, the more God gives to you, and if you're waiting for somebody else to give you something, for you to be happy, you ain't got no joy, my joy don't come from this world, my joy comes from a man named Jesus. Let me tell you about him. One Friday he died on Calvin's rugged cross. He looked to his father and he said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. He died. Oh, yes, he died. He hung his head in the locks of his shoulders. He died until the moon dripped away in blood. He died until the earth rocked from side to side. He died 
dead. They put him in a grave. He stayed there all night Friday. He stayed there all day Saturday. He stayed there all night Saturday night. But early Sunday morning, he got out of the grave. Stepped out on it from the eternity back to earth. And said, all power has been given unto me in heaven and in earth. And that's new to me to have joy right there. Whatever you need, God's got it. And if you need joy, reach your hand out of your comfort zone and say, God, give me some joy. God, give me some peace. God, give me some love. If you love the Lord with all your heart, I want you to grab your neighbor. Grab your neighbor, take them by the hand, hold their hand, and say, neighbor, through it all, all I've been through, I still, I still, I still, I still got joy. If you got joy, get out of your seat. 